It seems to me that there is a tragedy occurring in the photographic community today, and that is that despite the fact that we have better cameras than we've ever had, we have more photographic education than we've ever had, so people can make better pictures than they've ever made, and yet most of those photos are still stuck somewhere inside of their computers or on their phones and they never really see the light of day. Yeah, sure, they get shared on Instagram and Facebook and things like that, but they get seen about that big. And they're never actually touched. And that's sad because there's nothing more beautiful than a beautiful print hanging on a wall or a beautiful image inside of a beautifully printed photographic book. I enjoy that so much more and I bet if you're honest, so do you. When you look through a book of beautiful photographs, I'll bet you have so much more pleasure looking through that than you do looking at images on a small screen on your phone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basics for making a book of your images so that you can put it on your coffee table. Or if you're professional, you can hand that to your clients and allow them to have a much more pleasing experience looking at your images. Sure, you can provide them online for your clients to look at, and sure, you can share your images to your family and friends on Facebook, but think about the idea of having something beautiful in your home or in your client's home that is a pleasure to look through. So we're gonna teach you how to do that today. Now, I print proof books like this for every single client that I have. So I shoot weddings principally, but I also do this for uh, other clients as well, like senior portraits and things. They get printed material, and I think that that is key to their enjoyment of the images that I'm creating. Now this proof book is very special. It's, it's, a, it's a hardbound proof book, so it's very beautiful. Um, but it's also got something special inside, and that is it's got four images up on a page, and that allows my client to be able to see the images, figure out which ones they want to print, and quickly grab those images and go print them or find them on a disc or go find them on the website and order them. But the other thing that these proof books have is this, which is a very beautiful large image of my favorites. The reason that we have that in the book is so that the client can see the images that I think are quite beautiful and it helps to attract them to those images and show these are the images that you really should probably look at printing. And so not only is the proof book a very easy way for them to find their images, it's very enjoyable to look through, but it also kind of educates them as to which are the best images uh, for them to choose. Now let me show you how those are made. They're made in a program called Lightroom. If you don't know Lightroom, you're gonna have to learn it because it is the absolute best way to look through images. Um, but if you do know Lightroom, then you're gonna just pick this up right away and it's gonna be super easy for you to create a proof book and send it off to be printed and then you will be looking at your images in a very, very enjoyable way or your clients will be very thrilled I've never had a client that didn't look at this proof book and say, wow, that is absolutely beautiful. So let's do this. We're going to go into Lightroom and the first thing we're going to do is find the images that we want. So we have a bunch of selected images that we've created. We've already adjusted all of them. We've renamed them. They're all ready to go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all those images and we're going to go to the book module. So the book module is just the fourth module in up here in the top right hand corner of Lightroom. And when we click on it, we're going to enter into a blank book. Now, if your book auto fills, you can tell it to turn that off by going to the book menu and going to the book preferences and unchecking the area that says start new book by auto filling. That's important because that can get really annoying. Also, inside of the book preferences, you wanna tell it to zoom to fit not to fill, but to fit, so that you see your entire image without cropping. Then the last thing you need to do is make sure that it says fill text boxes with file name metadata. That's really important because you want the file name to be in the book. Once you've done that, you can close the book preferences, and then we're gonna head over to the right-hand side of the book module. You're gonna go here and choose blurb. 
So Blurb is tied directly into Lightroom, which is really amazing because you can make these great books inside of Lightroom and then just with the touch of a button, send them off and they are professionally printed and sent back to you. So we start with the Blurb book. I'm going to choose standard landscape because that's the size that I like my proof books to be. But remember, you can choose any size you like and you can make this not just a proof book but a beautiful art book as well. Um, and remember that the choices that you make here are going to determine the price. Uh, you can make fairly inexpensive books or very expensive books depending on what items you choose. So I'm choosing a standard landscape and I'm also choosing a hardcover image wrap. Now if I chose soft cover, it would cut the price of the initial book almost in half. So just remember that that hardcover wrap is going to change the price of your book. So play around with those options, but I'm going to start at a hardcover wrap and then I'm also going to choose a standard print uh, paper rather than the premiums. Now, when I'm doing an art book, I want the premium type paper or the proline paper. Uh, but when I'm just doing a proof book, I want to use the standard paper just because I don't want it to cost too much to create the book. Um, but that's really up to you. And then the last is I'm going to choose to turn off the logo page because I am professional and I'm selling it to my clients and so I don't need to have somebody else's logo on my book. But you will save money if you allow Blurb to put their logo on the book. Now, the next section that we have to work on is the auto layout section because we want to automatically lay out our book rather than having to place the images ourselves. That would take a long time. And I want you to think about this. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. Just think about the auto layout as your best friend for getting images onto the pages. Once you've got images on the pages, you can kind of monkey with them and play with them all you like. Um, but for my purposes, I want to auto fill the book really quickly and then I'll start adding some things after. So I'm going to go into the auto layout and you'll notice that I've already created a preset here called 4up proof book page. Um, but I'm going to show you how that's made. I'm going to click on Edit Auto Layout Preset. And inside there you can see that these are the options I have set. Okay, I have a custom page that I've made, but you can also just go straight into the Four Photos page and choose a photo page just like this. You can see that that page is already set pretty close to the way I have mine set. Um, so I'm going to go back to my custom uh, pages. And custom pages are just pages that you've set up um, the way exactly the way you want them and now you're just clicking on them after saving them. And that's kind of unimportant. Just choose a page the way you want it to lay out. Um, in our case, what we're doing is we're putting four up pages on either side. So fixed layout on the left side is going to give you a four up page. Fixed layout on the right side is going to give you a four up page. All right. So just choose a four up page that you like. And then you need to go down below and tell it, make sure to zoom to fit the image, not to fill on both sides. We're also going to match the long edges on both sides and that's going to help kind of line up our, our uh, text for the photos. Um, and then we're going to add text to the photos. You can see that we've got add text to photos. And then we're going to align that text with the photo. We're going to tell it to align it with the photo. And then we're also going to tell it to use a style preset for that text. Now, I'm just doing that because I want a specific style of gray text. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you have a specific style of text that you've created, you can certainly choose that. Okay, but you can see that that's the layout options that I've created. It's very simple. Choose your favorite layouts uh, and then just go ahead and hit done. Now, once we've done that, you can see over here that we've got a four up page. It's going to put text below the images. And all we need to do is go right above that and click on Auto Layout. You can see that Lightroom is going through and making our proof book. And it's auto laying out the entire proof book for us so that we don't have to do it ourselves. Because this would take forever to try and do on our own. Now, if you're making an art book, you might make this one image per page and you might not want to put the text on it um, and then just have it lay it out that way. It's really up to you, but I just want you to understand that the first place that you go is to create an auto layout preset. Once you've created that, you'll never have to do it again. You'll just lay out your book just like that. So once Lightroom is finished adding all the images to our layout, uh, we can go in and kind of tweak that layout 
Uh, the first thing that we want to tweak is if you look up at the top, the cover is not exactly what we want for our cover. The next thing to notice is that if we click on a spread and come down to the uh, area down here that gives you either the grid option, a full spread, or a full page view, we're going to click on the full spread and take a look at that. I want you to see how the book is laid out. So you can see that the images are above the print numbers and the print numbers are just nicely hovering right below each image. And you can see that that is completely as a result of our preferences here inside of the auto layout page preset. So again, that matching long edge and align with photo check marks are important to making sure that this proof book looks correct and the way you see it here. So now that we have the auto layout right and we want to change our book cover. So we're going to click on the book cover and we're going to show it as a full spread. These are obviously not what we want for the book cover. So what I'm going to do now is I've got all of these images and I'm just going to go ahead and click on, I want the, say the two star images only to show up. And that way I can go in and choose an image specifically for the page. So let's just go and find a portrait of the two and that's a good one right here. So I'm going to click on this portrait of the two uh, the couple and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drag it onto the cover and that creates our cover. Then I'm going to right click it and I'm going to zoom to fill that cell so that it fills the entire page and then I'm going to renegotiate the crop on it so that it looks exactly the way I want it to look and now I'm going to go to the back page. The back page I'm going to put something else on there. I'm not sure exactly what I want to put. Well, let's put this one because it's kind of the end of the wedding, right? And they're leaving. So I'm going to click on that one and I want to adjust this one a little bit differently. I want to make it smaller. So I can't zoom away from it. I can only zoom in. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the right hand side and I'm going to create in the cell, it's called the cell panel, I'm going to click on amount of padding and I'm just going to increase that. And You can see how I'm making the image smaller because I'm creating padding around the cell. And that just puts it right there in the middle of the book and that's quite nice. Um, and then if I want to add my logo or my, you know, who shot these images, I simply click on add photo text and then I can say uh, photography by Jared Platt. And then inside of Lightroom I have all of the options available to any Adobe program for my text. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the uh, right hand panel and I'm going to see the type panel. And inside of the type panel I'm going to go in and choose my font which I'll leave it as Arial and I can also choose the character's uh, color so I can change the color itself or I can just use kind of a nice gray text and then I can choose the size and opacity of that but I think that'll work just fine and I'm going to I'm going to move it over and justify it to the right so I'm going to use these buttons here to click on that and now you can see what that page is going to look like uh, simply by looking at this here. If you want to look at the uh, uh, the page without all the guides and crop marks you can come up to the top here and say sh turn off those show guides and now you can see what the page is going to look like without those guides. See that? That's what my photographic book is going to look like. Now, there's some other things that I want to do to it, so let's turn those guides back on. What we're going to do is we're going to say Tim and Samantha, and then we're going to choose the font that we want for that, so we have to come back down here. We're going to choose that same gray, and we're going to choose the size, which needs to be a little bit bigger, and we need to take the opacity, oh, not the opacity, I'm sorry. We need to center it inside between the top and the bottom of that spine. So we go over to the top and bottom justification and put it in the middle. And then we're going to give it a little bit. We want to, again, we're going to give it some more padding. So we're just going to go like this so that it steps away from that edge just a little bit more. Then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the distance between the letters. If we want to do more work here, you just simply in the character area, there's a drop down menu. Click on that and then we have the ability to change the tracking between the letters and just kind of spread them out a little bit. And that works for me. 
Now I want to change the background so that it's not this bright white color. So I'm going to click on the page itself and I'm going to go to the very bottom and here I can add either a photograph to go in the background or I can just simply change the background color which is what I'll do. So I'm going to turn on a background color and I'm going to click on the actual color setting there. Click on it and then when I click on this area it chooses the background color. But if I want to choose a specific color inside of the photograph itself, I simply click and hold the click. So I'm continually holding the click and I'm going to drag the color dropper off and onto the photograph and now I can go over and find the appropriate color for the background. You see that? So I'm looking for the appropriate color for the background from the other photograph. And we will go with something like this gray right there. Okay, now you can see that my, uh, I have a problem and that is that Tim and Samantha and the photography by, by Jared Platt are now the wrong colors so I simply need to highlight those and now come over to the character again and we're going to choose kind of a light light gray. That works much better. Actually maybe we'll just choose a color from the photograph itself. So we'll choose something from her dress there we go. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to click on Photography by Jared Platt. We're going to click on the character colors again. Go over to that same spot. And now we have seeable text. Okay, so that's what the fo photo cover is going to look like. I like it. So now we're going to go back to the grid here. And we can see now our cover is made. And now we just need to play with the pages in the book. Now, if you just wanted to have your book be a proof book only, you could just leave it just like this and you'd be all set to go. But what we're going to do is show you how to manipulate some of the pages themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some additional pages. So I'm going to click here on the front page. And in the front page, I want to add some more pages. So I'm going to go up to the top here and I'm going to add a blank page but it's going to add it after the page. So then I'm going to have to go and grab that page and drag it in position to the front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few more blank pages. And the reason I create four blank pages is so that I can have this one be a title page, this one can be a kind of a subtitle page, and then I always want the content to start on the right hand side of the first major content page. And so I'm going to have that start over here. So this is going to be a blank page and this is going to be blank. This is going to be a title page. This is going to be a subtitle page. The title page itself can also have the photograph on it of the cover. So I'm going to go back to the cover again, the cover photograph. I'm going to click on that cover photograph. I'm going to drag it onto that first page. I'm going to right click. I'm going to tell it to fill the cell. And then I'm also going to reposition the crop again. There. So now the same cover that's on the front is also going to be on the first page. Secondly, I'm going to go to this page. I'm going to make a subtitle page. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to tell it that I want it to be text pages. And I'm going to click on the full page of text. Then I'm going to go into the full spread view so that I can really look at this page. And I'm going to go to the text area and I'm going to tell it where I want these things to be uh, positioned. So I want it to be right justified in the center of the page and I want the character to be kind of a middle gray and I'm going to want the size to be maybe somewhere in the 20 something font range and I'm going to say Tim and Samantha. There we go. And so that title page is now created. I can put that text anywhere I want on this page just simply by using um, the centering and justification areas down here on the text or also I can use the padding and if I want the padding to be specific I can always drop down the triangle by the padding and I can change by turning off this link all and then I can change it and tell it at the bottom to increase the bottom padding which raises the text or I can do that to the top and it will lower the text. And I can do that to my heart's content so I can actually put my text anywhere on the blank page that I would like. Okay, so now once we've done that, we're going to go back to our grid again and look at these pages. 
and now we're going to start adding some additional pages with new photographs on them. So what we're going to do is, let's say we wanted to show off this church. So I'm going to click on this page here, and I'm going to create a new blank page right after it, and then I'm going to click on the actual photograph that I want to enlarge. So I'm going to click on this photograph, and what happens is as soon as I click on it, you'll see that it highlights down in the strip view, it highlights the actual image that I'm highlighting up here in the grid. So now I can just simply grab that image and drag it to that blank page, and now I have a full image on that page. And I can let it full bleed like that, I can uh, right click it and zoom to fill, and then kind of re-navigate re it so that we just see that. But I don't really like that all that much. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this page and I'm going to make it a smaller photograph so that it's got white space all around it. Then I'm going to simply go for another photograph. So I'm looking for additional photographs that I think would be nice, printed nice and big. So I'm going to click on, say, uh, this image here. And that shows me the image where it is. And now I just need to click add a blank page, grab that image, and drag it over to that. Now this one could zoom to fill. And now that's a nice image for a full bleed in a proof book. And it really creates a beautiful way of looking at what would normally be just an informative proof book. But now what you're seeing is this stylistic proof book that allows people to see the beautiful images and the image numbers they want to look at. So it's both beautiful and informative. Now remember, it doesn't have to be a proof book. You could be making an art book and all of these same uh, rules apply, all the same things that you would do. Go ahead and start by creating an auto layout situation and auto layout all the images. Then go in and start playing with the images and adding more images and adding more pages. Or you can even delete pages by simply going in and clicking on a page that you think needs to be removed. And you can right click that page and simply remove it. Or remember, we talked about custom pages. You can also say, I like the way this page is designed. You can save it as a custom page so that from then on out, when you go to click on a style of page and you click on your custom pages, those pages will be available to you here in the custom pages menu. Once we're done with all that, we're going to go down to the very bottom of the page and click on send book to blurb. And what's going to happen is Lightroom is going to take all the images, it's going to send the layouts up to Blurb, and Blurb is going to open up the website once it's been uploaded and compiled. Blurb's website will open up and give you the opportunity to buy a copy of that book or to sell that copy to your fans. That's as easy as it is. It's very, very simple to create a beautiful printed book, and it won't take you very long, and in the end, your clients will enjoy the experience more and you're going to enjoy looking at your kids' photos a lot more and people will be able to enjoy that process with you. So I highly suggest getting back into the world of print and there's no better way to do it than with a beautifully printed blurb book.